The Oyodo was intended as a two-ship class of relatively unique light cruiser design, although only one ship would ever be finished. The backstory to this ship goes way back to before World War I. Destroyer flotillas in the Royal Navy and some other navies began to be built with flotilla leaders. These were slightly larger one-off destroyers that were modifications of the design that was used for that particular flotilla and were supposed to be the flagships of their units. This progressed in the run-up to World War I, with certain light cruiser classes being made specifically to support destroyer flotillas in their operations as command ships. As submarines became more useful, there was also some use of such ships as submarine squadron leaders for organisational and some operational purposes. The Japanese had taken this principle to heart and built small light cruisers for these purposes, as destroyers and submarines expanded in size and capability, this would progress to the Agano class of light cruisers, which were built in some ways like oversized destroyers with a primary armament of torpedoes and a small 6-inch battery as a secondary defensive suite. However, Japanese fleet doctrine continued to develop and would eventually call for squadrons of long-range submarines to be coordinated from a command cruiser, which would use aircraft to find targets which it would direct the submarines to. The Agano class were unsatisfactory in this role and so a larger design was called for, with a total need identified for seven ships to lead the seven long-range submarine squadrons. The Ayodo was to be the lead ship of a starting pair from which lessons would be learned in the design of the next five vessels. The ship's design was derived from their smaller predecessors, using 110,000 shaft horsepower to drive four screws which maintained a very high 35 knot top speed. However, despite being larger, the ship's main armament was quite different. A pair of triple 6.1 inch turrets were placed forward in a super firing pair and were part of the surplus generated by the rearming of the Megami class with 8 inch twin turrets. Although designed as dual purpose, their anti aircraft capacity was minimal. Unusually for what was still a relatively small light cruiser, the anti aircraft armament was considerable for a pre war design, with 8 3.9 inch dual purpose guns in twin mounts and 18 of the substandard 25mm AA guns in 6 triple mounts. Unusually for a Japanese cruiser, no torpedoes were carried. This was because it was not intended to fight in a fleet engagement, and instead the rest of the ship's offensive equipment consisted of a large hangar and associated facilities that occupied the entire rear deck. This gave the ships a maximum aircraft capacity of 6, slightly less than the larger Tonnet class heavy cruisers, although the E-15K floatplane, an advanced design supposed to be able to operate in a hostile environment crawling with enemy fighters, turned out to be a disappointment, and in practice between two and three of the older E-13A aircraft were carried instead during the ship's operational career. A thin 2.4 to 3 inch belt provided minimal protection, but as mentioned it wasn't really supposed to find itself in gunfights with peer opponents. The ship was named after the Oyodo River and was laid down in early 1941, launched in April 1942, and completed in February 1943. Her sister Niodo was to be built on the same slipway once Oyodo was launched, but was cancelled as by the time Oyodo was launched the needs of the Japanese Navy had changed somewhat, and the role of submarine flotilla flagship was no longer appropriate, or indeed even possible. So Oyodo entered service as a regular light cruiser with occasional use as a transport. She was assigned to the 3rd Fleet and was transferred to the main body of the Mobile Force as part of a response to the invasion of Attu Island, with three battleships, two aircraft carriers and five heavy cruisers also marshalling to reply. But the Americans completed the invasion before the fleet could depart to counterattack. She would then spend time alternating between fruitless searches for American strike forces, probably to her benefit, and transporting men and supplies to the various remaining Japanese garrisons, mainly basing out of the truck naval base. At the start of 1944, she was slightly damaged by an American carrier strike, and by March she was in refit with her hangar converted into a flagship facility designed to take advantage of her elaborate and powerful communication suite. Radar was installed and the anti-aircraft 
Britain armament was notionally increased with 29 additional 25mm guns in 6 triple and 11 single mounts. As it turned out, the Admiral supposed to use the ship preferred to transfer to an underground bunker ashore, and six more 25mm guns were added in October, along with more radar sets, in an effort to switch her back to a more useful combat role. As she headed back to the fleet, she was attacked by the submarine USS Trepang, which fired six torpedoes, all of which missed, before she joined in a decoy force designed to draw away American fleet units from the invasion of the Philippines, so the heavier fleet units could destroy them. As the massed American carrier aircraft began to methodically batter and sink the decoy force, the Iodo would be hit by a bomb, two rockets and three near misses, but was able to withdraw as the bulk of the American pilot's attention was focused on the carriers being used in the decoy force. After further transport runs, she joined the heavy cruiser Ashigara and six destroyers attacking American forces on the island of Mindoro. They were spotted by American aircraft late the next day, and Iodo was hit by a pair of 500-pound bombs, although these did minimal damage. By 1945, she was being used to transport critical war supplies, successfully evading no less than 23 Allied submarines on one heavily armed supply run alongside the now hybrid Issei-class battle carriers. Task Force 58 would launch a strike in March 1945 that hit the ship three times, and she was beached to prevent her sinking before being sent for repairs. But in July 1945, Task Force 38 would launch a massive strike to destroy any and all remaining units of the Japanese Navy. After several days of continuous attacks, in which she was hit by five more bombs and numerous near misses, she capsized and sank. The wreck would be salvaged in 1947 and scrapped in 1948. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to tag your question with Q&A if you want to leave a question for the dry dock.